So this is my Daddy Cab. And for a while, it's had an issue with the monitor. Uh, a couple issues, actually. The main one is that the tube will arc. Um, it seems to happen on humid days. Oh, shit. God, that scares the shit out of me every time. Another issue is that when uh, the bass is really heavy, the screen will shake a little bit in some areas. On the song wheel, sometimes when the bass would hit, you would see things kind of like shift around a little bit with the bass. So you'd see like boom, 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 along with the actual music. I don't have this on video, but that's my little Photoshop recreation. And I think what this was, was bad solder joints. There are some little, you know, solder areas that had cracked or were kind of loose. And then the vibration from the bass, which was super, you know, a lot of vibrations, two subwoofers in there, was enough to kind of like expand and contract those joints and change the image a little bit. And uh, finally, the flyback is bad. Um, and I know that because the whole screen will bounce. It's only hap I've only seen it happen a couple times, but I know that's a sign of a bad flyback. So I have the replacement parts for this. Uh, at least I think I do. I've kind of collected them over the years. Um, I've actually repaired this before. So this is uh, the second time I've done that. I don't really remember it. It's been a long time since I did that work. So um, part of me is, part of doing this is to make a video for next time. But uh, yeah, this is kind of like the non-fun part of owning a cab. Um, taking something that you know kind of works but has some problems and is going to get worse over time if you leave it alone but it does work and then taking that and then potentially breaking it um, and potentially killing yourself in the process uh, not the most fun and glamorous part of arcades but um, I have two more pads and a whole setup here so if everything goes wrong and um, and I do break something, then I'm not going to be too broken up about it. So, I just want to say up front that what I'm about to do is very dangerous, and you should not do this uh, yourself or at home without a professional. The problem for me is that I literally cannot find a professional to do this. Even if I had all the money in the world, I, there's nobody I can pay to do this repair. So, also, the cab has been unplugged for you know a few weeks at least. So there's a there should be a bleed resistor somewhere out in the board that is slowly draining the charge from the flyback. That said, this is going on YouTube, so don't try this at home. Uh, it, it sounds like easy, but once you 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 have your head in there and you're looking at it, uh, ugh. anyway, I have um, my little discharge tool. But I don't have anything really good to discharge it to, but it's a wire with two little clamps. And then I have a screwdriver. So, put that on the old screwdriver like that, All right? So I'm gonna put it on the metal part that's attached to the board, um, if I can find a little place to clamp it. And then I'm going to take this and slide it under the little cup thing. If I die, can you have my pad? I don't know, man. All right, enough dicking around. Let's get the gloves on. These gloves smell so bad. They're like off-gassing, like burnt plastic smell. Careful not to touch the danger noodle. I just barely got it on a ground screw. Okay, I'm gonna do it right now. I'm do it's, it's happening. I'm gonna slide this under that little cup. Wish me luck. It's like, it's just so much shit in there. 
Uh. Um. Oh, man. These gloves smell like shit. These gloves smell like shit. My old gloves here. Almost on. My mic is staying here. This is the POV cam right here. Peep this out, guys. You want to own an arcade machine? You think it's fun? This is what you want? You want this? So at this point, I've taken my little screwdriver tool and put it underneath that cup, which goes on that little hole right there, and I've discharged the monitor. In reality, nothing actually happened because this tube was discharged already, but I went through the process. So what I did next was I took the monitor chassis, the, the board that's in there, and the smaller board that attaches to the neck of the tube, I, I, took all, I took them off, unplugged everything that was like attached to the actual cabinet, and then I slowly just lifted those boards out of the cabinet. Now I have a replacement uh, chassis that I got a long time ago, and that chassis was from a Pump It Up machine, a Pump It Up GX. It's the same part though. When I got that board, uh, it had some problems with it, so I immediately just took that and sent it to Arcade Cup. The guy at Arcade Cup, he repaired it, cost a couple hundred bucks, and it takes a long time. It took like three months, but it was just a spare. So I've had that spare for a couple of years now, and now I'm finally going to use it. I also have a spare brand new flyback, but the board, the spare that I already have, has a flyback, and as far as I know, I think that flyback works fine. So I'm going to just take the spare that I have, and I'm going to swap it out for this one. And then I'll take the current chassis that I'm taking out, I'll keep that as my new spare, and I'll probably send that to Arcade Cup along with my new flyback, have him put that on, you know, clean up the board, however he does, and then I'll have a new spare ready to go. Um, I just put everything back in, plugged everything in uh, as far as I, I think it should be plugged in. And now I'm going to turn it on for the first time. So fingers crossed it doesn't do something terrible. Okay, here we go. I'm really nervous. does not look good. That looks really shitty. Damn. You know, it's possible that the flyback needs to be adjusted, but there's a bunch of lines all over the screen. That seems really bad. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. There's kind of a green blob in there. The uh, the perspective is kind of fucky right now. It's like it's doing one of these. You know, one of these. It's doing one of those. Oh, that looks like shit. Yeah, it's. I think it's uh, the term for it is tombstone. It's like super tombstoned, and I don't know why. Oh, whoa, oh, look at that. It's all curved. All right, so it's outputting uh, color, but um, the color is like super off. And it's like really hard to adjust like when I'm sitting down. I think I need a, to figure out a way to get a color chart on the screen. I really wish Simply Love had one. That would be great. All right, it's the next day and uh, I've spent a lot of time trying to calibrate this, just 
going back and forth and uh, using this monitor to like double check. Um, the adjustment for it is in this little this little board inside there, so it's really not very ergonomic to adjust this thing by yourself. But uh, I have it as close as I think I can get it. It still has a little bit of a green hue. It seems like the white balance is off a little bit, but I just can't seem to dial it in perfectly. But I think it's it's good enough. It, maybe it's as good as I had it before. Um, I've been using this monitor so long that I'm kind of used to like having like super accurate colors and perfect blacks and uh, you know HD. So um, might be good enough. But I'll take some video of what it looks like. So now the monitor is mostly stable. Uh, twice now it's shut off on it by itself, but when I was adjusting stuff, um, the monitor went off, but so did my game capture too. So I think that's something with the computer. Uh, maybe I have a ground problem. I, I actually don't know what the problem is, um, but it hasn't happened to me while I'm playing. So I'm just gonna ignore that problem for now, assume it's something with the computer and I can fix that later. Uh, if it ever occurs when I'm playing. Uh, but it seems like it's mostly working. The monitor is kind of dialed in where, you know, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think I can use it like that. So now I'm going to update uh, TJ's image, uh, the, the ITG software on the uh, PC. I haven't updated that in a while. I don't think I've ever actually updated it since I installed it. So um, I think before I do that, I'm just going to download like all the critical config files just in case something goes bad and I can't get onto it anymore and then I'll go through the upgrade process that he has in the manual. So this is a little interesting fact if you didn't know this already. Um, when you're using uh, any kind of software on your cabinet if it's not outputting like the correct video signal, I don't know what it is, it's like 15 hertz or something, then nothing will show on the monitor. So the way that I get around that is to just use my game capture. So I actually like open OBS and I'll see the progress there. Uh, but some people will actually just take like a normal LCD monitor and plug that into the back of their cabinet while they do steps like this. But you can see on the right that when I was installing that entire time there was no video. So there you have it. That's what I spent my weekend doing. The chassis in the monitor has been replaced. It no longer arcs when I start it randomly when it's humid out. There's no more bouncing of the image when there's bass. And I haven't seen any of those flyback pulses from when the flyback's going bad. The downside is that there's now a greenish hue over some of the image which is a little bit of, of a disappointment. Also, when I upgraded TJ's image, there was an issue where the lights on the right side of the pad no longer work. Player one. Player two. What? 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 If you're on player one, the lights on player one will light up when you press the buttons. And if you're on player two and you press the buttons it also lights up player one so there's no way to light up player two I don't know what that issue is yet and um, it seems like other people are having it on this new version of TJ's image so I'm sure it'll get worked out eventually but worth noting if you're planning on doing that upgrade 
So I hope this has been informative for some of you folks who don't have arcade cabinets of your own. Uh, now you can understand a little bit of the frustration that I have for dealing with maintenance. But overall, I'll say uh, this wasn't so bad. Um, I did this on a long weekend where I had two days with nothing to do. So um, I took my time. Um, it also helped that I had a whole other setup that I could fall back on if I screwed things up. Um, so all in all, uh, this has probably not been my worst maintenance experience, but it is a pain. And uh, boy, it would be nice to just throw a flat screen uh, monitor on there and never have to worry about anything like this again. Um, and maybe I'll do that someday, but um, until I decide to do that, I'll keep the monitor running and I'll keep spare parts for it, um, either for me or the person that I sell this cab to in the future. So that's it for me. Have a good one.